Aloha, I'm Shane, I'm an artist. And uh, I know I was already introduced, but that's for me to practice, and that'll make more sense in a few minutes. So we all know this theme of this event is paradigm shift. So I look up the definition, and I found out the paradigm shifts are huge. One definition of a paradigm shift is, I'm going to read this, acceptance by a majority of a changed belief, attitude, or way of doing things. So communities can experience paradigm shifts. Entire civilizations can have paradigm shifts. And the internet has created paradigm shifts in industries like education, communication, entertainment, and shopping. But aha moments, on the other hand, are human scale. And I'm here because of an aha moment that I shared with Genesis regarding my abstract photography work. It's early 2010, and I'm at an art show, and I encounter what I think is an abstract painting, but I'm told it's a photograph, and it blows my mind. I've never seen an abstract photograph or knew that I was looking at an abstract photograph before, and I immediately want to know how to create one. So I Google unsuccessfully for several hours how to create abstract photographs. What I do learn is that artists and photographers don't like to share their secrets. <laughs> and I'm new to photography anyway, so I don't even really know much about cameras or aperture or ISO. So the next morning, doing the dishes, there's a pan there. It has a very interesting pattern in the bottom of the, of the pan. I grab my camera, snap off a few shots. And when I look at the bottom of uh, the images on the back of my camera, it's as if all the answers to everything I was Googling the night before are downloaded into my brain. Now, the best way that I can describe that is if you've seen the movie Ma The Matrix, when Trinity and Neo are on the roof and they have to fly a helicopter. And Neo says, can you fly that thing? And she goes, not yet. But she calls in the tank and he downloads the instructions on how to fly a helicopter directly into her brain. Now, my experience was not that cinematic. But it's a really good example of how something you've been, uh, of an aha moment, where something you've been noodling on instantly becomes clear in your brain. 45 minutes later, I've taken 576 photos around my house of my dog, my laptop, flowers, trees, and a bunch of uh, Costco beach towels that we had hanging on our lanai. So I experienced another ha ha moment while I was crafting this talk, but in order to put that into context, we have to jump back to 1988. I'm sitting in an auditorium with a bunch of other college students. We've all just been admitted to the University of Iowa School of Art and Art History. The dean of the school is introduced, and he steps up to the podium to welcome us. This is roughly what I remember from his talk. There are 97 of you in this auditorium, more than we've ever admitted to the school at one time. And frankly, we don't have enough room for you all. But that's OK, because some of you won't be here very long. The art world is a very difficult place to make a living, and most of you won't. In fact, of the 97 of you in here, only five of you will make a living in the art world. Two of you will build careers in art education. Two of you will find jobs in museums or galleries. And one of you will somehow stumble ass backwards into a job as a working artist. <laughs> Good luck. Have a backup plan. <laughs> it's not what I, I was expecting to hear the pep talk on the first day of art school. Nevertheless, three years later, I have a piece of paper that says Bachelor of Fine Art in Ceramics with minors in drawing and sculpture. That piece of paper says I'm an artist. So I open a small pottery shop, and I spend my week days and my nights throwing tumblers and bowls. On Friday, I load those into my old beat-up station wagon, and I go to craft fairs in Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin. Most of the time, I slept in my car, too, because I didn't make enough money to both pay for a cheap motel room and pay for gas home. And it sucked. And I failed at being a potter, and I sold my kilns and my kick wheel, and I found myself in New Mexico. Specifically, Madrid, New Mexico. It's a little town outside of Santa Fe. And it's made up of about 50 gallery shops and restaurants. It's a tourist town. It used to be a coal mining town. My place had a kitchen, a bedroom, a bathroom, and a front room. And I opened a little gallery in the front room, and I lived in the bedroom. At least I was still in the art world. So this was before the internet, but like I said, Madrid is, is a tourist town. And so every morning, I would reluctantly open the doors. I would engage the tourists as they waddled in. I would tell the same jokes and the same stories every day, and I'd watch the clock 
until I could finally close the doors at the end of the day. It also sucked. And I failed at being a gallery owner. Now, according to the dean, the only thing left for me was to return to school for and to get a degree in our education. <sighs> Thank God for the internet. Now, I forgot to mention that when I was in uh, sophomore, in high school, I saved up and bought my own uh, Commodore 64 and I taught myself how to program in BASIC. B-A-S-I-C. It was an early programming language. So, back to our story. It's 1997 at this point, and I and a partner are in the right place at the right time. It's the beginning of the commercial internet. We open a small web design company, we do really well, we gain awards and clients around the country and even a few in Europe. Right now it's 2001 and the dot com crash changes everything for a lot of people across a lot of industries. But this also coincided with my first trip to Hawaii and walking through the airport here in Honolulu, I turned to Roxanne and said, I'm moving here. 18 months later, we moved our cells our dog, of course, and our business to Oahu. It's now 2009. It's been 12 years of working six, seven days in the frantic and very stressful internet world and I'm completely getting burned out. A photographer friend all but forces me to buy this camera, the one I still actually use today. And I really resisted for a long time. You're not an artist. You failed as a potter. You failed at owning a gallery, and you don't know anything about photography. That is my self-defeating little monkey mind. His job, it seems, is to either keep me in the past or distract me with shiny objects of the future of what might be. In my head, he's kind of my golem from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> but my, buddy, my photographer buddy assures me that I don't have to be an artist or make a living at it. Just play, just have fun. And around the same time, Roxanne rem reminds me that I've always wanted to try painting. And she says the same thing. Just play. Just have fun. Don't get invested in the outcome of the future. Be here now and enjoy the process of painting. Well, one of my first paintings that I ever finished was purchased by the state of Hawaii. And it hangs in the permanent collection of the Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. So my paintings and abstract photographs are in private and corporate collections around the world. Somehow, for the last uh, almost year and a half, the Shane Robinson Fine Art Gallery has existed in the Andaz Maui at Wailea Resort. And right now, today, I stand on this stage as the first ever artist in residence for Ar uh, TEDx Honolulu, which is only one of seven pilot artist in residence programs that are being created around the world right now. Over the past few years, as I've work to be more conscious, to be more present, and to, to stay in the now. I've noticed that my friends have started to introduce me as, this is my friend Shane, he's an artist, instead of, he's a, he's a computer guy. But I still struggle with my own identity as an artist after almost 20 years of introducing myself as a programmer, database architect, a computer guy. Generally, as I'm introducing myself, like I did at the, at the beginning, while I'm stumbling to find the words, hi, I'm Shane, I'm a pro I mean artist, my little golem friend is whispering, programmer, you're a programmer. <laughs> you failed in the past and you'll fail in the future. But while I, was while I was developing this talk, I experienced another aha moment, which is helping me to quiet my little friend. So right now, as I stand before you and introduce myself as, hi, I'm Shane, I'm an artist, instead of my golem brain, my Shane brain is repeating in my head, hi, I'm Shane, I am the one of 97. Mahalo.